are there some of you who quietly you are saying oh lord when will this confusion stop in nigeria when will wickedness stop in our land when will the wicked stop oppressing the righteous with immunity We cry, oh God, when will you intervene? And you are watching us. Our people are killed. And there is no court that will speak into it. Our daughters are kidnapped. Nobody is talking about it. And it's a key, everything is normal. Pastors are slaughtered with knife as if you are killing a chicken. They were crying in the pool of their blood. Nobody is concerned. Young men are saying, permit us also to carry gun. We say no, but that is not biblical. And they are asking, if it's not biblical, so where is the God that fought for his people? Why is everything like this? Why are we going like this? What is the matter? Even cry out unto you concerning violence that is taking place. The other day I was traveling, I finished preaching in Kaduna. This is a Kaduna that I normally go preach anytime. I can drive out of that place, 7 p.m., 10 p.m. They say, Braguilia, are you going to say, yes, I'm going to sleep in Boko tonight. I've traveled all of those places. And I was about to go, I'm going to Joss. And the brethren say, Bragwile, no, 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 you can't travel by yourself, you can't travel. I say, why? This is still daytime, it's not yet night. So the senior brothers and sisters who are in the military, they quickly organized and got a very serious entourage. to go in front and to come behind. I wasn't feeling a big man. I was feeling a captured man. I was feeling like a man who no longer has liberty to move in his land. Other that that look at us, I believe it's a big man now because uh, so a man in front of him, entourage is here, escort. I say, no, 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 this is not the country I love to see. How can a simple man like myself be robbed of my simplicity because of wickedness? But as I was going, another king, another chief, who was in the meeting where I preached, who was the chiefdom, I mean the, the, the paramount ruler of the area and person, said, Bragwile, uh, as you are going, I'm also coming behind. Uh, I'm also coming behind. And he left maybe about 30 minutes after I left. He had his orderly. He had a policeman. Yet, in his own domain, he was kidnapped with his wife. And they subjected that man to trek everywhere into the bush. The wife who was tired wickedly, wickedly the push as a go back and she saw her husband led into an unknown bush no matter the ransom they were to pay they killed him so if kings are dying what is the hope of we the subjects is anybody in this congregation is he crying 
Is there someone here who is touched with what has touched Habakkuk? Habakkuk was not just crying for something that is not happening. He cried for the reality. He said, Oh Lord, why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and violence are before me? I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. And this. There are the race of strife and contention. The law is slacked. Did you hear me? What did I say? The law is slacked. The law has lost, has lost its power has lost lawfulness. When people do wickedly, they say go to court. Because they know the court has become toothless. Their hands are tied. They know what is right to do, but they dare not do it. Judgment never goes forth. Those who have money, they are the ones that carry the judgment. And so even when you are being cheated and they are, they are using that on your head, they say, go to court. And you shout it, they say, go to court, stop talking. Why are they so bold? Why are the wicked saying we should go to court? Because the court is in their pocket. And the wicked, they compass the righteous everywhere I seem to say we have told you we are not about righteousness now we have taken over whatever you know whether it's right keep it to yourself we are in charge is there anybody like Habakkuk in Nigeria are there preachers who understand that we are now in a terrible situation are there pastors who are not just concerned about their pocket and about their stomach and about their big name who are concerned that we are entering into a difficult time we are coming to a very difficult time I just traveled abroad the other day to go and preach. And inside the aircraft, I don't know how many people were seeing me, were coming to greet me, were coming to kneel down and say, Sir, uh, you preached in our church some years ago. You did this. I said, So what is happening? I said, Say, We are going. You are going. With all your family, we are going. All your children, we are going. Some of you sitting here, your children have gone. Those that have not gone, they are praying to go. You are also praying for them to go. Professionals that we trained here, they are gone.
I said, where is it? He said, no. Sir, what do you want us to stay again and do? There's hopelessness. Even if we go down, we're just sweeping the floor. Let us go. So when you sent me this team, I was wondering whether you indeed want to join me to cry. I've come to this church several years, many years, continuously. And I've always known that God wanted this church to be a voice in the city. God placed several of you so far as members in very critical positions at a time like this.